everybody, it's Lyra from Lyra Gaming, and today I'm bringing you my very first build for Pathfinder's Outriders World Slayers, and I am bringing you the sequel to my favorite personal build from the original Outriders. For those of you that ever played or tried my Outriders Terminator build, this is my Terminator 2 build. But unlike the original build that had no kind of official set, in this expansion, we actually do have a dedicated set that is built around the turret playstyle. And boy, is it fun and powerful. In this build, I will go ahead and show you all of my gear. We're going to look at the skill trees, the pack trees, everything that you need recommendation-wise to help you out with this really fun and straightforward playstyle. So stick around, make sure to like, subscribe, and smash that notification bell for more Outriders world slayers content now let's go ahead and take a look at my terminator 2 build All right, as always, we're going to go ahead and look, start by looking at the skills, and this is very, very straightforward. We absolutely need all three of these. We're going to be using both the Blighted Turret and the Cryo Turret, but unlike the original Terminator build, these turrets are going to be heavily modified. You're not even going to remember them. That's how crazy new and different they're going to be, and you're going to see that in action when we look at the mods, and then we also need Blighted Rounds as we're going to get a very, very important buff from this as well. Now, when it comes to the passive tree for the Technomancer, we are going to be playing a brand new kind of format. So we are no longer going down a straight uh, traditional one tree build. So we have this hybrid build here. And it's very important that we go this way because the key here is we need to get as much anomaly power as humanly possible but we also need to get to this capstone overclocked, which when we activate gadgets, it's going to give us anomaly power that's increased by 40%. As a bonus, we do get this extra kind of revive function that can sometimes save you. But in order to get this optimized, what we're going to do is we're going to start here on the bottom tree. Make sure we pick up all the anomaly fuel nodes for the anomaly power. Also, we want to make sure we get all the resistance piercing. That's going to be really important. So we're going to go straight down here. We're going to go through Anita plating for some resistance. That helps out. We are going to get Adrenalizing Antenna. This is nice because we're going to get 30% more anomaly power whenever we drop the Blight Turret, which is going to be constantly. And then we basically go all the way to the right here. We are going to pick up the two anomaly fuels towards the end here and finish up with Disturbance Coating for that extra 15% resistance piercing. So from the tree itself, we get 30%, which is nice. Then we're going to go up here through Wipeout and then just go straight to the right. We're going to want to pick up the reduced cooldowns on the gadgets. We're going to pick up some defense uh, plates here, the uh, armor plates. Again, it'd be nice if these were more offensive nodes, but, you know, we, we're going to take what we can. This right here is actually nice. The Fracture enemies affected with Freeze receive 30% more damage because we are going to be able to stack... A bunch of different debuffs as we're going to see from the pack trees and uh, of course we're going to finish with overclock so this is the one setup I've been able to figure out that works with it uh, this is definitely what you want to go with next we're going to look at the pack tree and we're going to go uh, up the desolator tree so we're going to start with initial striker this is going to give you active skills uh, they're going to increase our anomaly power by 15% uh, for five seconds and since we're going to be spamming active skills this is going to be always up uh, lethal devices is the key to this build here your ordinance and gadget skills inflict toxic so what this basically means is your cryo turrets will now apply or do toxic damage which is important uh, because it's going to inflict toxic to enemies and deal an additional 10 percent of your anomaly power as damage if toxic was refreshed because you're going to constantly be applying toxic with all the bullets and you're going to see you're going to be shooting a lot of bullets from your cryo turrets this is going to be constantly proccing this 10 percent anomaly power it's another reason why we need our anomaly power as high as possible then we're going to go through the pain clear now it's a nice little health region and then we're going to go up here to permanence this is very important 
Inflicting so toxic on an enemy has a 100% chance to inflict a random additional status. Because all of your turrets, as well as your gun damage from Blight Runs are going to be applying toxic, it's not unusual uh, when you're fighting something that actually survives more than a second or two to stack all the possible debuffs on an enemy, which we're talking about. Uh, we're talking about toxic, we're talking about burn, we're talking about uh, vulnerable, weakness, cry, you can freeze enemies. Uh, you can see, you know, all six or seven uh, different debuffs on a single uh, elite enemy, for example. So this is huge. And then to lean into that, we get this uh, dissection. You deal 5% more damage to enemies for every status inflicted on them. So this is really, really nice combination for this build. Now next, let's talk about Ascension perks. And basically, in a perfect world, you can get everything from Anomaly Power. But the ones that are going to help you out the most is uh, Anomaly Power here. You can get, uh, when you max it out, 10 on 10, your next Anomaly Power bonus, uh, or Anomaly Power bonus is 10% extra. We also like Resistance Piercing. So again, this will help you get 40% re uh, Resistance Piercing, which will help you land over your Anomaly Power damage more. And there's also a mod that's going to help you increase our anomaly power with this as well, as you'll see a little bit later on. We also want to get make sure we get that extra 10% status power, because again, we're going to be converting status power to extra damage for our turrets, which is going to be big. And then anomaly damage bonus increased by 10%. Now, the nice thing about anomaly damage is this modifier not only impacts skills, but also any mods. So whenever you have mods that do X amount of damage, they are going to be modified by anomaly damage. It's not going to be modified by anomaly power, but it is with anomaly damage. Now, additionally for this build, we want to make sure you get magazine size uh, increased by 25%. When we talk about guns, I'll tell you why this is important. And then uh, also 5.5% damage to elite bonuses. And then I haven't maxed this out yet here, but uh, get your cooldown reduction. So those are the big ones. Once you get these, I normally like to get a skill leech also, get a little bit more healing. And then after that, it's, you know, you can go with any of the endurance ones for survival. I don't really go for critical chance or critical damage as much. You could go critical damage, but most of your damage is going to be from your turrets, for example. So these ones that I've gone over are the ones you should prioritize first. All right, now let's, let's go on and take a look at the weapons. And really what we need is one of two guns. So the gun I happen to have is the Final Penance. So this is the gun that comes with Mage's Rage on it, which is critical shots grant 10% anomaly power bonus for 10 seconds and stacks up to four times. This is big because you're going to be able to get an extra 40% anomaly power. Now, alternatively, the other weapon, I don't, I don't have a drop uh, currently for me uh, on this character, but you can also get the gun that comes with Omen. The regardless of which of the two you get, the other mod that you're going to put onto it is going to be one of the other two mods you didn't get. So the key here is you need this very specific combination of three mods. You want Mage's Rage, Omen, and Fortress. So if you have this gun, for example, that comes with Mage's Rage, you need the third mod to roll is either Omen or Fortress. And whichever one you don't have, you put the other one on your second slot. The key here is the clip size for this gun because you're going to want to make sure your blighted rounds last as long as possible. This gun in particular has a smaller clip size. Uh, we have the 25% extra ammo, so it gives you 60 ammo. But if you had the gun that comes with Omen on it, and you can get over 100 ammo, which is nice and convenient. So get either one of those two guns and you'll be good to go. All right, and now finally, we're gonna take a look at the armor and the mods. So the first piece of armor here is gonna be the Technomonger's Mask. And it's got perfect stat allocation. We got anomaly power, cooldown reduction, and status power, we love this. And so the turret comes with his double trouble for your cry turrets deploys an enhanced turret with two barrels instead of one, doubling the fire output. Now. I also had it roll with cryo uh, with twins, so two turrets can be placed before triggering the cooldown. Now, do note, because it's so random at what you get at your third mods. When you look at my pieces here, basically 
across all of my third slot mods. You can basically find them on any of these pieces. So for example, this twins, if you get this on the chest piece, that's fine as long as you get, for example, Captain Hunter on the first one and so forth. So those are kind of interchangeable. Keep that in mind. And they're also interchangeable with the mods you see me modify here. So one of these mods, you're never going to be able to change. So for example, on here, it's double trouble. Notice I did not modify that, but I modified Anomaly Echo on here. So as we go through this loop, just keep in mind that we just want to make sure that across these five pieces, we get twins, for example, as well as Anomaly Echo. Now the chess piece is going to be the Technomonger's Vest. It comes with hazardous modification, and this is a big deal. Uh, your Blighted Turret now fires toxic infused projectiles. So it's no longer a flamethrower. It does a ton of base damage. Notice here at my level, it adds 130,000 base damage and has 50% increased attack range. So basically turns into a giant kind of cannon. So if the cryo turrets are kind of like the Gatling little machine guns almost like, this is going to be like the big meaty cannon and it hits like a Mack truck. And then for the two other mods, it already comes with increased damage. So we don't have to make a, any modifications on this. So you're going to notice with time, you're going to have a total of four bullets being shot at a given time with the cryo turret. So this base damage gets applied times four, making this extremely effective. And then we have Captain Hunter on here again. Most of the things that take any time at all to die are going to be elites. So that 25% damage is a no-brainer. Next, we have the Technomonger's Leg Armor. And it starts with improved coolant. So for cryo turrets, doubles the fire rate of the deployed turret. So not only do the cryo turrets have two different barrels, but now they both shoot double time. So that's basically four times the dam damage, four times the fan. Feels like a Kit Kat or something. And then the two mods I have on here is first Euthanizer, deal 25% more damage against enemies afflicted by Toxic. Everything you do applies Toxic. It's gonna be on everything at all the time, so this is huge. And then I also actually like Virulent Compound. It deals, you deal 10% more damage to elites afflicted by Toxic or Blight Fire. Afflicted elites explode when killed, dealing AOE damage and spreading status to other enemies within a five meter radius. This I actually really like for mobbing. While it may not be as optimal in some cases uh, as maybe just like a 25% damage versus Frozen, for example, which would be an alternative that you could get instead on this, that could be a good situation against enemies. But when you are just fighting a bunch of mobs during the main levels, this really helps. Next, we have the gloves. Because it's a Technomonger's glove set, we do sacrifice the anomaly power primary stat. So it does have skill life leech and status power. Both are amazing. Again, we want to make sure we have status power on all our gear. But uh, we are missing that anomaly power, which is a bit of a bummer because that can get quite high. But what's nice here is the mods are going to be amazing. So it comes with radical therapy already on here. So deals an extra 15% more damage against enemies afflicted by toxic. And then hail shot. Cryo turrets increases the turrets damage based on your status power. This is one of the reasons why we need our status power so high. So not only is our toxic damage going to do more damage, but really it's these crazy turrets that are going to go bonkers. And then we have Arms and Anomaly. That's another mod you want universally on this build. Critical shots increase your anomaly power by just a buttload of damage. For me at my level, it's 137,000 anomaly power for six seconds. All right, and finally we have the Plague Source Boots. This is an old set piece from the original Outriders. Doesn't have perfect stats, but it does have status power, which is key. And it comes with an anth rich anthrax, which is key. Your blood turrets can do a, a mass amount of more base damage. In this case, on my level, it's 133,000. We had the other mod that gave an, an additional amount of damage equal to this, and this is going to scale like crazy. Also, we want to get Alchemical Mastery. This is a brand new mod that's also amazing. While your blood rounds are active, you receive, uh, in our case, an anomaly power bonus equal to 10% of our status power. And this is why we want to have our status power so high. It's going to increase our damage like crazy. And then the other mod I like here is Unstoppable Force. Increases your anomaly power by 50% of your resistance piercing. We have 40% resistance piercing on this build, so that's an extra 20% anomaly power, which is great. This is everything you need to know as far as the mods just about perfect from what i could gather so far so as you can see tons of damage stacking to your turrets just tons of anomaly power as well 
and the gun damage the gun is going to help you spread that uh, the omen don't forget is going to make it so that's going to apply bleed automatically and also apply a, a status that increases all damage by 30 percent so all your turrets everything is going to be buffed this is nuts all these three mods are going to apply and, and buff all of your turrets for example now i did want to also mention an alternative mod that you could potentially work into this build if you want to sacrifice some of your damage against elites and it's this mod right here that you see the third mod on my plague sour skull it's called focus discharge and so on blighted turrets the turret discharges anomaly beams that deal in my case over 200,000 damage every 0.3 seconds at up to five enemies within a five meter radius for mobbing this ability is king it helps you one of the weaknesses of the basically turret builds which is dealing with aoe mobs and so you could modify this on one of the slots that is definitely something that can help you out with aoe again you can kind of experiment if you want to include this or not it is up to you but especially when leveling i had focused discharge on it as well uh, on a on a pretty regular basis all right now gameplay wise this is super super simple all you're going to be doing basically is you're going to be dropping your turrets as you go into a battle and then you're going to apply your blighted rounds and then be very smart of your ammo just focus on getting crit shots stack those crit shots to get all your buffs up and then let your uh, mods melt everything i right, guess i hope you guys enjoyed my terminator 2 build it's my very first build that i'm bringing out i knew i wanted to focus on this first because again back in original outriders i just love turret gameplay it just wasn't meta before but now you can have a lot of fun with it it's very very really very very fun and very potent finally after all this time so do enjoy hope if you do enjoy it make sure to drop a like subscribe drop comments let me know your thoughts on this build and make sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when my new outriders videos drop and as always guys thank you for the support Make sure to come and join us on Discord. Uh, check out information on there as well as my Twitter for information when I'm going to be streaming this game. And you guys can come along, get some carries, have some fun as we did with the original Outriders launch. All right, guys. Thank you again for the support. And I'll see you in the next video.